I do want to introduce now someone very, very special to uh, the festival and uh, also to um, TLA and many of you as well. Um, many of you probably know him as one of the most prolific, popular, and uh, important uh, gay adult filmmakers. And you're going to see a very, very different side of him to, uh, about something that's very important to him. And this is a very special film. I would like to introduce, returning to QFest for the, I don't even know how many times, third, fourth time, Mr. Michael Lucas. <laughs> Thank you, Eric, and uh, thank you very much, uh, Philadelphia Q Fest Film Festival. And thank you guys for coming over here on Sunday, sunny afternoon and spending time here with us. I don't want to take your time because I prefer to give more time for Q&A. Um, so please stick around and uh, ask any question, uh, and I would be very happy to answer you. So again, thank you very much, and enjoy the meeting. So that's the questions. All right. Yes, please go ahead. I think they should have supported me. I think they should have given them, me money to produce this movie. But unfortunately, they did not. I used the money that I, uh, from my uh, main business, from adult company, Lucas Entertainment, to sponsor my movie. I, actually, I never did any fundraising in general. So I just used my own capital. Yes, please. Uh, I agree with you. That was not a plus. That was a minus. Um, I think someone should make another movie and introduce the thriving lesbian community of Israel. You know, I, I, the, the movie is called Gay Man in the Promised Land. <laughs> what can I tell you? I'm very much familiar with, the, with, with, with gay men and uh, with the gay community. I go to Israel every year since 2004. So I did stick more than that, than that. But then when I was editing, I was thinking I should have, I should have worked harder on getting uh, lesbians uh, to participate in this film. Absolutely right. I loved it, thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I, I went to Israel to film this movie twice. Once I went there to film the gay pride and uh, follow the characters. And then I went back uh, and I did the talking heads. And talking heads actually made all the difference. So I did the right thing because when I was editing after my first trip, I saw that so much is missing. And then I realized I need to get talking heads. And so that's what I did. I think all together it took me basically a year. But, you know, there was time in between when between two trips when there was not much activity going on because I needed more materials. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I had an Israeli friend who is a videographer as well. He, he is a, Yuri Mazari, he is also a director, a co-director. And so he uh, was looking for people. He, you know, Israel is a small country, everybody knows each other. So it's, you know, <laughs> you know it, was, it was very easy to, uh, he was sending me uh, emailing me the characters and their bios, and I was looking at who is interesting, and uh, you know that that was the selection process. Oh no, I did I did the tour to Israel. I uh, did the tour to Israel. I brought some. I mainly did it because I wanted to bring some press uh, members of the press there, and that's what I did, because I wanted to introduce them to Israel, to what I see. I wanted them to see as well. I wanted to change their perspective uh, to the country and to the gay community, and that's what I've done. I did not have really intention to do it again. It takes a lot of time, and you know, you, and it's very quite exhausting. <laughs> you know, and I just cannot see Jerusalem once again. I mean, I saw it six times, and you <laughs> spent another two days in Jerusalem. It's you know quite exhausting. Most of the movie I filmed in Tel Aviv, and I also did film in Jerusalem, in Knesset, in Israeli parliament. Uh, there are about eight or, nine, eight or nine cities in Israel that have gay prides. So there, there are gay communities all over, but it 
it's con concentrated mostly in Tel Aviv. So I thought that would be the best. And, and people are the most interesting people live in Tel Aviv. So I was filming there. Yeah. It's kind of like, you know, Philadelphia because it's close to New York. <laughs> Lots of interesting people. Right. Thank you. Uh, I just finished the documentary in Russia. I just filmed the documentary in Russia. It's in the editing process. It is very different than this one. It's a sad one. It's a sad one. Because, yes, uh, I thought it's a very good time to film, uh, to film this movie uh, since, uh, as Russia is introducing now anti-gay laws, uh, it did introduce anti-gay laws, first in St. Petersburg, and now it's all over. And so Putin just signed it into the law. The, it's called, uh, the law is called uh, it's against propaganda of pedophilia and homosexuality, just in one line, just in one line. So, which is confusing for Russians, which is very broad, what is propaganda? So I interviewed the, a lot of gay people, a lot of lesbians this time, <laughs> a lot of lesbians I learned from my mistake. Uh, so, uh, and this movie should come out I hope in December, January maybe. It's a lot of work because, you know, Israelis, they do speak English. Overwhelming majority speak very well in English, as you could see. Um, in Russia, Russians do not speak English. Overwhelming majority of them do not speak any English. So we have, I don't know, 20, 20 hours of footage and we need to translate it all into English and then do editing. And um, it, it's a long process. It's more difficult than the movie that than Israel, movie in Israel. Absolutely, every day. Every day, yes. It, and not only from it, Jews go to uh, do Aliyah. That's what what we call Aliyah. Uh, do Aliyah uh, from all over the world, from the United States as well. Jews are moving to Israel daily. From all over the world. That's why the population of Israel just uh, the first time, I think, three years ago, uh, surpassed the population of Jewish population in the United States. I think now Israel is seven million, I believe. I think I'm right, seven million people. Yes, next please. You're being a I'm not at all. I'm not at all. Uh, I, I'm very happy with all the things I do. You know, I. I produce adult films and I do uh, write for different magazines and I, you know, I wanted to produce this movie and because I thought it's a right, it, it, I thought it's a very important movie. Unfortunately, Israeli filmmakers did not produce anything like that because, um, uh, and I can come to that, to the point if you want me to, why that's happening. But, you know, and I do uh, produce Russian movie because uh, I know Russia so well, and it's also a very good time to produce this movie because of this all this disgusting, despicable laws. Um, so that that was the reason. But no, I'm I'm not uh, striving to become a documentarist. You know, there are people who are you know much better at that. That's not really my job. It's just no one was doing that, and that was important. So I did. Um, now to the question, I think uh, you know about. Documentaries in general, why Israeli documentary uh, makers, filmmakers did not produce this movie? Because, in my own experience, and thank you very much to Philadelphia QFast, but it's very, very difficult. It is very difficult to get the positive movie that is part of, that is speaking positively about any aspect of Israel to the film festivals, particularly when it comes to gay film festivals. Um, if you produce a movie that portrays Israel in a bad light, then you got it. And that's about documentary or it's about any movie about Israel. Very difficult to get. I mean, I had a lot of film festivals that declined on the film. And you know, I mean, the reason is sometimes uh, bluntly, uh, the people were, were very blunt in telling you, well, you know, we don't see the conflict there, we don't see, you know, the uh, occupation, we don't see, you know, it's all very positive. Well, I, my answer was always that I, you know, if you will produce the movie about it, very often 
audiences ask me someone from the audience asked me where is the occupation you know how can you make this movie without the depression well i can because if you produce the movie about the occupation would you put a part about gay rights in it absolutely not then why are you asking me this question you know i wouldn't even I would never ask the question, you know, because it's obvious. Well, you chose to produce the movie about occupation. So, uh, yes, <clears throat> the point is that it's very, very difficult. I know that the movie about Russia will be very easy to, um, to, to show. But when it comes to gay politics, and in general to politics, it's all, film festivals are all about politics. No matter how good the quality of the film is and how professionally it's done, you know. I, I'm, I'm sure that ultra-Orthodox are not thrilled <laughs> about the gay movement in Israel. Uh, I, I just like ultra-Orthodox of uh, Christian right, uh, you know, that with, of course, uh, um, you know, uh, Islam, uh, people and Islam, you know, they are not happy about anything gay. I'm sure they did try to, but they failed because because um, Israel is you know it, it's all about the laws. It's a democratic country, and the thing is that Jews uh, came from the tragedy of Holocaust and moved to Israel, and they are very much familiar with their oppression. So I think that might be one of the reasons why uh, why we why Israel is more even advanced than the United States. Might be that reason. Also, it is a smaller country. Today, there is no talk show, no no TV series that would not have a gay character in Israel, uh, and that gay character is not shown as a clown, you know, and stereotype, but actually as a you know, sexual human being, and uh, that people can relate to. I would like everyone to be the audience today. I think, of course. Uh, gay people are the audience uh, and I've shown it on Ju Ju uh, Jewish film festivals so um, realistically LGBT people and uh, Jewish people but I would like more people to see it of course um, the reason would be of course I want more people to travel to Israel I mean you guys what will be interesting for me uh, raise your hand who would love to go to Israel after this movie Okay, all of you. Great, great. Uh, all, how many of you wanted to go to Israel before you saw this movie? Some of you. Okay, <laughs> good. So I uh, guess I guess I guess I did something right by producing this movie. And those who raised their hand, I'm sure now will go. <laughs> that would be great. Well, what would I say? I would say this is a ridiculous theory. I mean, if not for New York Times, we will not ever hear about it. I mean, it's the same as to say, you know, United States uh, is giving rights to gay people because it want to take attention from the war in Afghanistan and in Iraq. That would be ridiculous. Nobody will think about it. Yet, for example, New York Times will publish the article of um, uh, Schulman with the theory of pink washing, which was always a jargon, but they mainstreamed it sort of in a way. And how ridiculous that is. I mean, this movie actually did show that Israel, just like every other country in the world, it was a fight, which is still going on. Government, Israeli government, never gave gay rights to LGBT community. It never gave the rights. It was a fight. As one of the characters said, you don't uh, ask for rights. I think he think I think he said you fight for rights, and you demand you take the rights. You take the rights. He said you don't. Yeah, that's what he said. You take the rights, and that's that's precisely. I, I mean, it's a fight in courts and for public uh, opinion, just like in every country in the world. Governments they never pioneer gay rights or civil rights. They always go after the public opinion, and public opinion is formed not by the government, but by the uh, activists. 
and there are a lot of activists in Israel. Jews are very active. <laughs> you know, Jews are very active parts. You know, they, uh, they, you know, in Soviet Russia, I mean, the way the Zionists, the smart, those, the smart Jews, the sensible Jews, the way the activists, uh, Zionists, and they left, or they were Bolsheviks and, um, you know, commies, and uh, that, that led the October Revolution. Gay people, are, I mean, Jewish people are very active. Mm -hmm. There is a movie already that exists about the history of the fight. I, forgive me, I forgot the name of this movie, but this, there is a very good documentary, actually, if, if anyone remember the name. But there is, a, there is a movie like that. Secondly, you know what, what? I mean, there should be one movie, just one movie that actually shows Israel as a, in a positive light, and I think that's only my movie. Uh, we, everybody did hear, everybody know about uh, that Orthodox Jews do not like gay people, and that at some point there was a shooting in the gay center of Tel Aviv, and they just caught the guy actually. So everyone knows about that. In fact, that's only one. This is only one thing that 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 was uh, actually ever spoken about uh, six years ago about gay life in Israel. It's about the shooting in the gay center. They didn't really talk about that the next day it was a huge demonstration of protest where gay and straight people uh, went into the main square and uh, Shimon Peretz, Israeli president, uh, was standing there with the back in the background of the, uh, of the gay flag and the Israeli flag, speaking against that against this, this despicable, despicable attack. Um, but, you know, a lot of people all over the world were very happy. I mean, they, they pretend that they're so outraged, you know, but um, a lot of people, you know, were walking, like in Canada, they, uh, a lot of anti-Israeli groups were walking with candles, uh, you know, to show their support. You know, I, they didn't really care. I mean, they didn't walk when Matthew Shepard was murdered in America. But they did walk, uh, have a walk with candles when, when, uh, when, when the, 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 the two, two, two guys in the gay center in Tel Aviv were killed. Very peculiar, right? Um, yeah. Well, the last question? Yeah. Well, thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you.